Fast and firm with clear skies here in Miami Gardens. It feels in a way like Ron Nicoletti and Jason Blewett. And this is a good thing that we just said goodbye. And now we're back for a new week. The single dark day. But hey, we got eight races on the card. Eight races this afternoon. And as you mentioned, a fast a track and a firm turf course. Always a lot of fun. And uh, starting off another great week here. And uh, going to be a lot of fun on Friday again. Yeah, absolutely. Another Stronic 5 in the works. In fact, week number three, 12% takeout. And you you know what? Gulfstream Park West uh, strut, strutting its stuff in the uh, in the rundown, the lineup of Stronic Five races this coming Friday, October the 12th. In fact, we've got a double header beginning with that opening leg, and both races from GPW are turf races with big fields, and you'll get a sense looking at the sequence. Big fields are pretty much the norm. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one to do, but a lot of fun, and only got that 12% takeout. So the Stronic Five, and uh, we're kicking it off right here at Gulfstream Park West. Absolutely, two in the a mix from Santa Anita Park and one, of course, from Laurel Park. Nice looking two year old Philly made in special weight. We just taped the preview show. That'll be up a bit later today over at XBTV.com. And do note a bit later today as well free pass performances for the Stronic Five will be available at GulfstreamPark.com. So, what's on tap today? Well, we only have one carryover to get to and kind of a uh, almost a sprinter like card with eight races in the mix beginning at about 120 with the high five and the open opening leg of the early pick five and about a week ago somebody took down the entire jackpot rainbow for about 50 G's. Yeah we're starting it again of course we had it on uh, Monday but they're up to $4,700 plus so uh, we can see it uh, starting to build this afternoon you got a chance to take that down and of course we ended with our final pick five of the afternoon. And we've got a couple of short price favorites to start legit favorites I'm not saying they're both going to win but they look pretty darn good in fact no surprise I've got both of them front and center to start out things in this Wednesday early pick five and stand alone in race number two, the anchor, if you will, the single on a very budget-minded $8 play that could be on the shorter side of things if some of these big favorites do win. But Gilberto Zerpa, who's just been unbelievable of late, unbelievable all year, but he's eight for his last 12. And how about Juan Ariagata, who's got the big favorite in the first? He's three for three this meet, Ronnie. Three for three, and uh, that's where I went in this race uh, when uh, we show you the, the analysis of our first race. Good ticket, and so what does that say down there? Only eight bucks? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. How I've got go wrong? two drop downs in the third. The fourth race is a potential landmine or problem because all those uh, maiden claimers and their low-level Philly and Mare maiden claimers, they've all got to go two turns and a one-mile distance. And that, to me, is a major question mark with just about everybody. But I think I'm hoping, anyway, i got two, two grinders who can uh, maybe outlast everybody else and 4-7 in the uh, last leg, race number five. I was a pretty big fan today of the five-run right. A little bum that horse is out. But you've got a Pletcher Furster now with Edgar riding the 4C major and then the Jen Antonucci trainer change on the outside. And Promontory, Promontory, who looks uh, pretty good. Yeah, I know you get the breeding on that horse. is just incredible. We'll talk about that a little later on. So a pretty good ticket, only 8 bucks. You can get it twice for uh, only 16 bucks. Yeah, I may have to bang that out <laughs> for, a, uh, for a dollar, actually. <laughs> because, and I almost, if Zerpa didn't have one in the second today and she nailed it, I would have stood alone and singled the favorite in the opener, the number five in his image, for a couple of different reasons. The first of which, well, it's kind of a, a two for as far as the main reasons. The trainer, Juan Ariagata, and this horse is lone speed here. Should play out as the controlling speed, which was the case last time out on that final day of August over at Gulfstream Park. Three, in fact, exit the race that we're bringing you from the top of the stretch home. And although in his image did not win, he did everything right but get the money. Yeah, he, you know, and he's run well on this uh, turf course here at Gulfstream Park West. Certainly looks like the one to beat. You see his performance last time out in his image. And uh, the barn has just been going great guns. We, we started notices over at uh, Gulfstream Park, now at Gulfstream Park West. So in his image on top of my ticket, I just thought if someone went up and challenged this horse early, might set up a, for the horse like the number seven Diamond Mint, who does his best running from that stalk closed position. A Elizabeth Dovals, Miguel Vasquez in the saddle, and I closed it. Oh, I'm looking up there. Cold Super and Architectural in third. And a Cold Super <laughs> favorite? 
Second choice, <laughs> third choice, fourth choice. It's sort of the way you have to go in that opening Yeah, lane. it's a little tough. A, it's not a big field by any stretch, uh, if we're being honest. And B, some of the bigger priced, and there's only a couple of them, that they're a little hard to make on paper there. And we got the, the big speed for the hot barn. Anyway, let's move on to the second race. Speaking of hot barns, as we hit the main track, our opening dirt race today is a, a three-lifetime 6250 claimer. You've got a, a Zerpa, Zerpa claim on the outside, and she nailed it. We're going to show you her last race, this uh, filly by Corfu. We know it's for a different barn, but the fact that she's coming in off a of victory, we also know she was 1-5 to five and paid $2.40 and barely won this race. But it's hard for me to argue with the trip she's likely to pull beneath a missile and the fact that it's Zerpa. It's just hard for me to come up with the scenario where she doesn't perform up to those lofty standards. Yeah, the only thing, like you mentioned, in the fourth race, also in the second race, got to go around the two turn mile here, but it looks like a logical contender in there. The horse I used in second was the five, and that's Sarah's Day, who's dropping to this level. A pair of solid uh, outings at the 12-5 level, and, with, and then followed that with that clunker at the $16,000 level. So we're going to show you stat on Mr. Antonio Sano. Turf to dirt, 50% drop in claiming price. He's three for 22, 14%, 32% in the money, 65 cents is the return of investment. That's the horse I use in second, but I'm in agreement with Jason. She nailed it. Looks like the one to beat in there. And then I took an optimistic shot with the number two optimistic shot to be on the try ticket. But not such an optimistic <laughs> shot because you've got the horse third, right? You know? <laughs> well, I got him third, but I mean, I'm taking a little bit of a shot to try and beat. She nailed it. It looks like you got to beat her to win. Oh, absolutely. From the outside as with that early double on this uh, day number seven of the GPW meet in the books. We'll take a little breather on the other side of this timeout. It's all about chasing that rainbow with one Ron Nicoletti. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Coming down to the finish with Fort Martin to catch him. They're not going to catch him. Fort Martin, the winner. He went clear with the stop, and he's coming home. Curly handspring. Full diving. Brilliant in the same of Costa. What a red of the red of the red Great Breeders' Cup Classic with Fort Larned and Mucho Macho Man. And as we rejoin you here at Gulfstream West, uh, Jason and Ronnie, we've got our little uh, Breeders' Cup Classic hopeful of our own to root for in Gunavera. Gunavera has been uh, training very nicely. I uh, got one more work before he ships to Kentucky to uh, uh, get ready for the Breeders' Cup Classic. So we're certainly rooting for him. He's a fan favorite here down in South Florida. Gunavera. Good old Gunavera. Trained by Antonio Sano. has got some horses running throughout today's card. Antonio, in fact, based here at GPW, which Todd Pletcher is not. I'm wondering, you have to have this Pletcher horse, though, in the opening leg of the rainbow, right? I got him on the ticket, but I went too deep in here. I went with the four Mambo Dan. Answer. Uh, you know, I just thought that this horse was the way to go. And I, I, the, the Rainbow Six to me is, is eight, eight. Uh, of course, the four, third to the eighth race, $28.80. Got my single this afternoon, the number seven, Evolution. The only seven-time winner in the field certainly fits the conditions per perfectly. It's Georgina Baxter. You got Paco Lopez. Last race, I went four deep. I thought it was a wide-open affair. My long shot today, brilliant scheme. This one uh, debuting on the turf here for David Fawkes. Uh, ran up in Finger Lakes. I'm just taking a little bit of a shot mm -hmm. with that horse. See if we can go. We can get in a hot apprentice, Romero Mirage in the saddle. So that was my ticket, $28.80. I like that Fawkes horse, too. Yeah. Didn't, didn't pick that one on top, but... Uh, I think the outside personally is where it's at in race race number eight, the finale. And Ronnie very much has the two horses that I prefer who are both going out off trainer changes this afternoon. More on that duo in just a few minutes as we move on to speaking of duos, a race that ultimately, and you disagree to a little extent, yeah. I thought it would come down between the uh, number four Mamo Dancer, who 
the more I look after uh, the five expected entries scratched out, Mambo Dancer is going to be a real favorite here, right? Yeah, plunging to the 35 level after failing to hit the board in back-to-back 75,000 maiden outings on the Saratoga turf. Todd Pletcher, Edgar Zayas, turn back to a mile. I, I just, I mean, he'd want to be, but I couldn't single his horse by any stretch. That's why I used the number eight, spiteful and second on my ticket, who's debuting locally at this level, set a pressured pace. Mike Yates, been watching him all year long. Most with his two-year-olds, but we'll show you a stat with him with his uh, maiden special weight, maiden claiming with all the horses on the turf. Three for 26, 12 percent, 38 percent in the money, dollar 84 return of investment. And you mentioned that scratch of expect an entry. I thought that that changed my selections around a little bit in here. But Mambo Dancing now looks to me a little bit better. As we move on to race number four, already time for this uh, October 10th. 10-10 today here at GPW. It's already time for the late pick five. Again, one mile. They've all got to go the distance in race number four, around two turns. Awesome clue, the five. Is that magic the seven? Are my guesses to basically outlast everybody at what figures to be a very demanding eight furlong test for the seven gals entered in the opening leg of the sequence. Four seven once again. I just think in the fifth race, the uh, Pletcher Furster and of course the Jen Antonucci uh, trainer change, who's who's ran and lost a few times, but has likely uh, never faced a field like this on the turf before in terms of just quality or maybe lack thereof, depending upon who can run. That horse looks pretty good as well single comes in race uh, number six the seven evolution if that horse can still run at all yeah maybe that's a little too much but if that horse is anywhere near the evolution that he once was if even if he is like a b-level effort i think he's going to win that race a couple of scratches in that race too so you're dealing with a compact field it looks like evolution i mean if you're looking for a single to keep your ticket affordable yeah as i mentioned georgina baxter with paco lopez looks like the one to beat unless the wheels have come off yeah i mean he's got speed paco and that outside post i mean he really looks like he could bury that field if he's ready to go today seventh race is unquestionably, in my humble estimation, the best race on the card today. I am three deep, and perhaps that isn't enough. I'm using Athera, my top selection. I'm also using the six, Feed Me Carrots, who Ronnie likes for Georgina, and the number four, Conquest Dynasty, looked a little interesting to me. Figures to be an okay price. Like I said, I just prefer the new acquisitions towards the outside and Little Tequila and the eight brilliant scheme. And we don't see too many Finger Lakes horses down here in this part of the country. But that's the case, my friend. First time out for Mr. Fox. Yeah, and that makes it so intriguing. And it just looks like a race where you might be able to get a little bit of a long shot in there. So uh, uh, I, th I think you got the logical two in the opening leg here with the, the five and the seven. I actually split it with Divine Diva. But I think Awesome Clue is where you go. We're going to try a two-turn mile locally, rallied five wide to finish third behind that next out winner called Tapad Claire. That was going that one-turn mile. It's Kathleen. It's Edgar. Edgar the other day, a big day for Edgar. So you're getting good connections here. Like I said, split it with Divine Diva, and he's that magic. Two to one morning line favorite in there. I got to see more from that horse. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if it'll be really close between Awesome Clue and Is That Magic because you do have Kathleen and Edgar. They're going to attract quite a bit of money. You don't have the drop down like like you do with the seven is that magic but you've got a horse who's run okay in context at that mile distance here's the fifth on the afternoon as we flip the page we're back on the turf and we always welcome some maiden turf no matter what time of the year it is and that is certainly in the mix along with a half brother on the outside to keyed entry justin phillip who else we got in the family? Algorithm. Algorithm. <laughs> and, and Greenpoint Green Crusader. Gr Greenpoint Crusader. You see our commercial each and every day. So uh, Promontory just comes in loaded. Now, it didn't run that well when it was in both the Christophe Clement and the Arnold Delacour bonds. But coming down here, and as you mentioned, good spot for this horse to uh, uh, get going. Promontory uh, going out. Gulfstream uh, West debut. South Florida debut, of course, with the Jenna calling the shots. You would expect, though, that the four in a race like this, that C major, is going to be very live. And just like that, we're like, Oh, Pletcher's cold. His horses aren't winning. He sent out a horse that picked us off in deep stretch here on, I think it was Monday afternoon. Monday, Monday or Sunday? Sunday or Monday, yeah. The, and uh, the, Exactly. But I want to show you a stat I found. I found this intriguing. With Todd Pletcher, first-time starters, maiden special weight on the turf. Here's the key. 
at Gulfstream Park West, right here. He's 5 for 12, 42%, 67% in the money, and a $3 return of investment. So right here at Gulfstream Park West, when he starts these maidens on the grass, he does exceptionally well. But uh, I'm with you with Promontory. And I, I like a, a watching a little bit, who's a $210,000 son of Tappet, uh, trying to turf again, putting the blinkers back. Didn't run without the blinkers last time. No, and his lone turf race, the rider today versus back then with peace and love, a big upgrade in that department with Romero calling the shots from the inside post. See what happens there. And it is funny. I mean, Todd obviously has the numbers to pick and choose from. He's got the bench and the stock, but he is very good at sizing up which piece will fit here, which horse will fit here, so on and so forth. And the stat does a good job in that department. Final dirt race, actually, is the six today. We've got an all-turf late double coming up. And as we uh, head to the main track for this 10K uh, claiming race, again, not to belabor the point, He's going to be a big favorite. It all comes down to whether Evolution can still run, because if he can even a little, he's likely just going to wire this field. Yeah, it hasn't been seen since July 20th, but a solid workout pattern. So Georgina Baxter, Paco Lopez, certainly uh, both Jason and I singled on our uh, advanced tickets there. Uh, you know, in the late pick five, me with the Rainbow Six. I got the four and second along with you at Glass was making his first start. He rallied to finish second. That was a 12-5 condition claimer for Mr. Antonio Sano. Edgar Zay is uh, try to get the six-year-old his third lifetime victory. All right, best race today goes in the seventh, does jump start an all-turf late double, and we're on the green naturally going this mile with this a starter optional claimer for the three-and-up Phillies and Mares. There's a part of me that thinks about this much, I mean, we're talking maybe a neck can separate potentially half the field, four or five horses in this race as far as overall ability. I mean, a real minute spread at the upper echelon. So I'm going to take a bit of a price who does her running from way back. And man, I like the win a couple, couple of races back on August 11th from Athera. And here she is winning for trainer Jose Gallegos. And uh, she'll have the colors of uh, owner Robert Amendola on her back, the uh, hot pink and the uh, black colors. Scatnap, Got the great trip. She's in the white blinkers, yellow sleeves, turning for home. Benny Tyler, who had her up close to a very tepid pace. Boy, I was really impressed with the way Athera finished up here. I'm hoping she gets enough pace, gets a good trip. But I look at Mikwaima, the eight. The nine Balada, I think they hook up from the get-go. I yep. really do, Ronnie. There's a lot of speed in this race, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking here, and I don't even have your horse on my ticket. That's how wide open yep. this race is. I didn't go with Thera, but I went back when I knew you were going to show the replay and watch it. It was very important. Uh, I mean, very nice race a couple of starts back, but I did end up going with Phoebe Carrots, who's stretching out to mile. Her two race a win streak ended when she was blocked behind a wall of horses. You go back and look at this race. She had a steady. She finished six. It was a 20 option claimer, so a little bit of a trip note there, and I split it. I put me my Kiyuma on ticket time. Um, excuse me, on my ticket, me Kiyuma, and this one was given some time off. Going to be up there, pressed to pace with Bellotta and Final Fury. So a lot of speed in this race. Yeah, I'm looking for a meltdown in this race. I'm taking a Thea to score. Indy Gita back off a layoff has not run since Kentucky Derby weekend. Now with Elizabeth Doble, she'll go from the rail with Miguel Vasquez. Really fascinating puzzle on the Gulfstream Park West turf for the gals. One more race to bring you as we uh, bring down the curtain, as we like to say. Here's your Wednesday, October 10th nightcap. Turfing here, 5 eights, 3 and up, $10,000 made in claimers. Outside for both Ronnie and myself. Brilliant scheme. Your long shot today and little tequila. Yeah, I want to show you a stat on uh, trainer David Folks, who had that number eight brilliant scheme. Uh, first after a trainer switch on the turf, he's solid. He's 18 percent, 43 percent in the money and a dollar 73 return of investment. Just was intrigued with that. Romero Mirage in the ticket. Little tequila now in the Juan Rodriguez bond. Looks like the logical choice now. Going to try and beat it with brilliant scheme. I'm glad to see you put that one on your ticket, too. This is my kind of horse. Obviously, like you, David, he's a mainstay here and has been for many, many years. But I have a, a deep amount of respect for the operation that he runs. And that horse was worth a, a little bit of a stab here first time out. If for nothing else, off the trainer change to Mr. David Fox. Little tequila, though, right around happy hour for me in the nightcap, my friend. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it'll be perfect timing for us to maybe go down and uh, talk about this and have a little bit of a... Uh 
tequila. We'll see if that happens out. Leo, Lionel Ray is at the control, so that's so we see the race. Jason, just want to mention for those people up there in northern Florida to be really safe up there. That's yep. some hurricane they're going to see. And missed us, but we know how it feels mm -hmm. when one of those are barreling down on you. Yeah, no, stay safe, everybody. We've got a lot of friends, a lot of horse-playing people up there in northern Florida. And we'll say it again, the horse player, racing fans of the Stronic Group, best fans in the world. So stay safe. Take those precautions, and why don't we take a little time out? We'll join everybody shortly before race one, but we're sending, on, sending it on up, that is, to the big man, Pete Aiello, for those Wednesday scratches and changes. A world class.